Hello there, fellow humans, and welcome to another episode of your replays. And obviously, we're going to start off with my replay, because that totally does make sense. Now, if you want to send me your own replays, then put them on my Discord server. Link to that down in the video description. Now, the FE4202 is a really weird vehicle. Not only has it more hull armor than it does have turret armor, it also has a Hesh gun. That is, if used correctly, really good. I mean, it also has a regular heat gun, but getting this vehicle for the heat gun is essentially a waste of time because this vehicle truly excels with the heat gun. And obviously, you kind of try to aim at the enemy and maybe hit your shots, but if you're looking at the rear of an AMX 50B, kind of hard to miss it and do 440 alpha damage with those hash rounds so always use calibrated if you are running this tank because obviously you want to get that extra penetration on your hash now this is not a beginner tank you want to be an advanced player already because you don't have any premium ammunition that has higher penetration so when you're fighting a vehicle that you can't pen with ap that's it you're out of options you can maybe do some splash damage with your hash but it's not really going to do that much. But obviously, if you're in a position like this behind the enemy team, when the enemy medium isn't really... Well, first of all, he's outclassed because there's two mediums on my team and only one on their team, which is a massive advantage already. Even though the heavy tanks are kind of falling apart, that Brigetto isn't really doing anything to secure the flanks, so I'm very easily able to get around the back here. Now, four versus four. It's not going to stay like that for too much longer though and not in a good way but well we'll see towards the end how this one ends because i'm not gonna tell you already this is one of the best games i have ever played and also one of the most disappointing enemy teams i've ever seen in my entire life because essentially what i'm just doing here i'm sitting up on this hill i'm just going shooting down range having my teammates spot the damage for me because here's the thing if your teammates take the damage for you, if your teammates lose hit points and you do damage, you're still making a fair trade. It's just not your hit points that go down. And if you can do that for long enough, you can win with even a bad team. But in this case, now it's down to 2v4 from 4v4. And what I want to do here, ideally, is reduce the amount of guns. So take out that Hori, take out the one shots. Obviously, it lower rolls by a lot. So... That is the main goal that you want to do in a situation like this. Take out guns, because if they're dead, they can't shoot back. And you always want to isolate the enemies one by one by one. You never want to put yourself into a position where you have to fight multiple tanks at the same time. You never want to do that, and especially not in a situation like this, where I have 1,072 hit points left, and it is a one versus four. Is this winnable? Well... Maybe, probably not, but let's see what goes on. The biggest problem here is the HP of that E4, and also that Hori that just drives out in the open and gets his ass kicked and sent back to the garage. That is not what you want to do. Just like you don't want to just drive straight through the middle of nowhere when you know there's a guy out there and you're a one-shot. The E4, did these guys not pay attention to where I am? Like, neither of those three guys had any clue of where I was positioned. And that just tells me that they have no situational awareness whatsoever. And now, I don't have any situational awareness whatsoever either, because that was a purposefully risky peek to find out if that guy sort of knows what he's doing, and he seems to be able to hit his shot. Now, 400 HP, not really that great in a 1v2. I'm still making mistake in a, in a game like this, don't you worry about that. It's, it's very easy to make mistakes. What is harder is for the enemy team to punish those mistakes if you know what you're doing wrong. Basically, if I know what I'm screwing up and they don't know what I'm screwing up, they don't have a chance. So now what I'm doing is the good old trick of driving one side and waiting for 10 seconds, going unspotted and driving the other way. Obviously, it's very effective. It works most of the time. Don't do it too often, though, because then people catch on. If you do it like three, four times in a row, they might catch on. But most of the time, they still don't. The E4 is still confused as he is, and he might even have a below 100% crew because he just can't seem to spot me at that distance. And now, obviously, the type peeks out. Again, doesn't peek properly, just peeks out sideways even though he's a one-shot. And I'm terribly disappointed in these two guys, right? All they would have to do is sit there, sit tight in the cap circle, wait for that time to go up because I can't do anything about that. But they keep peeking me, which is the easiest thing whatsoever because I know that I can peek faster than they can. 
so yeah, the disappointment sets in and the, the Type 68 just decides to, you know what? I don't want to win this. I'm just going to drive out straight in front of where I know that the FV4202 is sitting. So I don't know what's going on with these guys, but they have no awareness whatsoever. I just run past like an absolute clown right here and the E4 does not do anything. He just misses his shot, completely biffs it. He should know where I am and pre-aim it, but he just throws it over there. And now one shot versus one shot. How did it get this far? Well, because the enemy did not pay attention and now I'm gonna fake it again, just because I can. And obviously in this case, I get spotted. So all of that is for nothing. You can again, look at the top. I was spotted. The clock went off at 1.13, which means at 1.03, I should be unspotted. I turn around a bit earlier because it doesn't matter at this point. And then basically all I'm gonna have to do is I have Hesh available, so I can do that. I can splash him. I don't have to pen him. And I just fire AP because why not? He misses again. So I'm screwing up. I am giving these guys the biggest ways possible to win that battle still, but they cannot seem to manage. Now I'm firing AP straight into the rear because he just, he's just sitting there. He knows where I am and he's just sitting in the cap circle. Ugh, I am severely disappointed in those enemies. And well, even though that I played terribly, there's nothing they could do about it because... What they didn't do is they didn't punish my mistakes. And that's the number one thing that's important. Understand what everyone else is doing wrong and then punish them for it. Now, there isn't a lot that this Forex smile is doing wrong in this battle. And th there's the subscriber replays. This is the KPZ 50T, a great tier 10 medium tank. That is the essential unholy combination of the Leopard 1 and the E50M. Combines a great armor with a great gun and also excellent mobility. So this thing, if it does come to the shop for, let's say, 20k, I think this is the only tier 10 collector medium that is actually worth your money the t22 if it's like chucked into the auction for cheap maybe but oh that we gotta be careful there that that was a bit risky there but just bounce a shell from a yeguru because why wouldn't you and then biff the shot now this is what exactly what i mean you can play as badly as you want if the enemy is incompetent they're not gonna punish you for anything and here's the thing the KBZ 50T is an amazing vehicle, and the fact that the Panzer can't pen the turret of this thing is very impressive. And the fact that the confidence right here from Smile to know, listen, I'm gonna sit here and you can do nothing about it. That is just lovely to see. Because here's the thing. If you make mistakes, and sitting out there in front of a Panzer E100 was a mistake, yes. But it doesn't matter if you make those mistakes in a way that the enemy can't punish you for it. If you sit out there and the enemy's all gonna bounce off you, who cares? But at this point, what should be cared about is that the team here is mostly located around the city part, which is a terrible thing to have, especially on this map. You do not want a team that mainly focuses on the city, but maybe it's time to get out of here a little bit, but what is that again? The T92 just sits there. He knows that like 20 meters away from him is a KPZ 50T, but he doesn't care. He's just like, I know nothing. Situational awareness in this game is quite easy to obtain, but essentially impossible to expect from either your teammates or the enemies. And this keep bouncing off the KPZ because this tank's very good. So it's literally situational awareness. That's all you need to be a good player. If you know what's happening around you, you know, don't just have this like tunnel vision of always just staring at one tank because this is a strategy game. You want to have that wide view and that is also true for anything in the rest of life. If you only have a narrow view, you will rarely get to the truth. And that is the case in real life and in World Tank Splits. You have to have awareness of everything that goes on around you. And the enemy team in this case doesn't have that at all because Smile is up to 4,000 damage already sitting in this spot that if the enemies were to work together and be competent they could have already pushed and overrun but who cares about that i guess because let's say the t30 pushes up to the rock and the t22 and the object 260 work together to push this side here and the m103 as well that could have 
easily resulted in a victory, but they just sit in their corner and, and wait for a smile to pick them off and rip them apart. And out here we have a M103 against an E75. Now guess who's gonna win that? A very high HP E75 or a low HP M103? Now, if I was the M103 in this situation, I would have gotten out of there hours ago. Because there is no chance that you win that fight. And that is another thing. Awareness, awareness. Just look at that guy. He doesn't have a clue that there's an E75 and a KBZ 50T around the corner that can shoot him very easily. And he goes around and he dies. And that E100 as well. He just peeks out there without a bother in the world. Don't care what's going around you. I don't care. I want that damage. That is exactly how you lose in this game and that is how you can destroy your enemy team and absolutely obliterate them with just a general sense of what is going on around me don't just focus on that one tank in front of you look at the battle as a whole of what is going on because if nobody else is doing it but you're doing it well guess what you can get battles like this one once again the Panzer. he's now aware that the kbz 50t is here right so he does pull back, rightfully so. Does that T-30 still sit under the bridge where he has no cover whatsoever? Of, of course, of course he's sitting under the bridge. I mean, do you really think that he's going to think? He's just sitting there. Now, if that T-30 was to have awareness, he would have already pulled back a long time ago because he would know that the KBZ in this position can easily put shots into the T-30 without the T-30 having a hope of replying ever. But he's still sitting there. He got shot twice and he's still sitting there instead of just driving back. I mean, I, I really don't understand this game anymore, but I do appreciate the general incompetence of the Blitz player base because it makes it so much more enjoyable and fun to just absolutely rip through. So, I mean, why would you complain about bad players? Bad players is exactly what you want to play well. I mean, the worse the player base, easier a time you have to pick all of them off huh so th that's exactly what's happening here as well and even though there's only one minute left there's not going to be much that that Yeagru can now do the t30 was sitting there did nothing the Yeagru sitting there did nothing they didn't play together and now e75 on one side kpz on the other there's no chance in hell for this guy to do anything and that is 7500 damage is this the na server because th these guys kind of feel na server to me what, what do you think put it in the comments do you think this is the na server because i don't know so great game and wonderful enemy team right there love that and now we get to the third battle it's again a tier 10 medium tank and this time it's the mx 30 b because this is just so lovely to watch a good player with game and map awareness just absolutely pick apart a clueless enemy. That's just lovely to watch. Now, the important thing here is there's a 183 on the enemy team, there's a 268 version 4 on the enemy team, there's an E3 on the enemy team, and the E3 is right there. And here, it's only one medium against one medium. It's only an E50, but mm, there still is importance here. Because the E3 decided to come up here to this medium side and falling back here is the perfect choice. Because if you stay up there, you might just get pushed. And I have no idea how to pronounce your nickname, but you know who you are. So there's the E50 bouncing off the AMX 30B's questionable frontal armor. Because here's the thing about the 30B. It's a decent tank. Is it worth buying? Eh, maybe. The problem is... It is a combination, like the KPZ 50T is a combination of the Leopard and the 50M. This is a combination of the Leopard and the STB. But it has a terrible cupola on top of the vehicle, and it's not quite there in the gun department. It has been buffed quite substantially. It's still not quite there where it could be. So it can be considered for a low gold value, but I still think KPZ 50T is the one to get. And now, here's the thing. What is that E3 doing? I mean, just general question. What does that E3 think he's doing? He can't outrun the AMX-30B. He has no chance of ever catching an AMX-30B. So attacking here, what are you achieving? The E50 isn't helping, which the E3 should know if he had any awareness. The E50 is not helping at all. In fact, now he's dead. And now 
this E3, he's completely out in the open and he's completely alone. And he also should know that there's a 4005 right there next to him and there is more tank destroyers in the back. What's Halvarize? I have no idea how to pronounce that. So, yeah. What, what What's going on? I mean, this is how you get good at this game. You know how dumb everyone else is and then you punish them for it. That, that's the, the quintessential truth of World of Tanks Blitz. You cannot be good without knowing why you're bad. Like, if you know what mistakes you make and you identify what everyone else does mistakes are, you're gonna have a great time. And in fact, I was lying. There is another medium tank on this enemy team, but um, I don't think I have to tell you that he's bad. I think, I think that kind of explains itself at this point. But um, if that Progetto would have worked together with the E50, with the E3, and pushed the MX-30B, that it could have been a completely different scenario. But instead, he decides to be a complete clown and sit in the back. But that is, well, it's a terrible thing if that player is on your own team, but it is a great thing to see that player on the enemy team. Because remember, you complain about bad players on your team, you also would have to complain about bad players on the enemy team. But, for example, because I'm a hypocrite, I only complain about having the bad players on my team, and I really love having the bad players on the enemy team. That's just how this game works, right? You complain, and then you, and you don't. That's just how it goes. So, meh. Here's the thing. There's a 183 there. You don't want to peek that, but the mx 30 b is pretty fast. If you're a really good player, you can get a lot out of this. I mean, it's it's, it's sort of a leopard-ish kind of tank. So you can get a lot of the, out of this vehicle. The 183 just sitting in the corner. Nothing you can do. The Progetto is disappointment. I, th I think disappointing is, is the only word you can really give for a player like that. And now it is still only down to a 3v3. So... The team here hasn't been doing all too great, nonetheless, despite the old enemy team being terrible. Lovely snapshot right there. That's another great thing. If you're quicker than the enemy team, if you can peek faster, you're simply gonna win. You're gonna be better. So, game awareness, map awareness, also importantly, human awareness as well. What are every what is everyone else doing wrong? That's what's important here. And also be incredibly quick at both thinking and peeking. Because then the chance of you being shot is essentially minimal and you'll have a great time and have a lot of high damage just like this. So, yeah, you're never going to do great all the time. That's obvious. But even a Super Conqueror can bounce off the rear of an AMX 30B sometimes. But if you pay attention to what's going on, if you think in a big picture, then you too will get amazing games like this. Because... There is nothing better. Don't exploit those weaker than you. In, in the game, at least, not in real life. Be kind. Be nice. But in, in the game, f*** them. Let's go. Thank you very much for watching. See you next one. Goodbye.